Let's now talk about two broad categories of analytical techniques. The first one we'll describe are called total analysis techniques. These are sometimes referred to as um, old techniques or original techniques. And that's simply because that's what we started out with in analytical chemistry. And this is something where we take the entire sample and measure it. And this technique will respond to the absolute amount of analyte. So quantities that we would measure to determine the absolute quantity of the analyte would be mass or the number of moles or the volume of something. So for example, a gravimetric analysis is a, met a, a total analysis technique. That's where we're weighing some of the sample. And we, that's an example of using mass for it. But often these techniques include taking a sample and precipitating one of the analytes that we want, drying it, and then weighing it. And the idea is that we're going to precipitate all of that species, and then we can determine how much of that particular analyte was in the sample by filtering and drying. So these total analysis techniques, sometimes they can be uh, time consuming, but often they're rather um, simple. They require very simple equipment. Generally speaking, we just need some glassware to measure the volume or we need a nice analytical balance. So that's why we still employ these sometimes. And to put this into an equation, we'll have the signal is equal to some proportionality constant. And in the case of mass, this proportionality constant could be the uh, molar mass of the compound. Or in the case of volume, this would be the concentration of titrant. So that would let us then connect the signal to either the moles or um, some value that's important to us with the analyte. And that will tell us, hey, this is how much analyte's there. So we'll use this. Now, this K right here is generally something that we would just know. We would know it from either the molar mass or the stoichiometry. Somehow we would know that this is how much um, the signal is related to the concentration of the analyte. We'll be able to calculate that. That wasn't always the case. A long, long time ago, when we didn't really know about molar masses and other things, I know it's difficult to imagine that we wouldn't know those things uh, because it's something that we just use all the time. But there was a time when we did not know uh, chemical formulas or molar masses. We just knew that if we did it this particular method in a certain way, it would always produce the same results or we could um, uh, get results that way and they were called um, proportionality constants. They actually used this. And, and so when you were doing a gravimetric analysis, there was some proportionality constant that you knew, oh, if I put this much lead in the sample, this is how much mass I will get out in the end. And um, now we can just use molar mass and stoichiometry to, to do that. We don't have to have tables of values that will relate one uh, mass back to its original um, amount, but that's how it was used to be done. All right, enough on total analysis techniques. There's another major uh, type of technique, which is called a concentration technique. And this is where we don't have to measure the entire sample. 
we can actually just measure a portion of it, which is one of the major advantages of using a concentration technique. We can measure smaller amounts of it. We don't have to measure the entire thing. And somehow we directly measure the concentration of, of analyte in the sample. And two very uh, prominent examples of this would be spectroscopy. So like a, a UV vis absorption spectroscopy or fluorescence or some one of the atomic spectroscopies, really anything that would be light based techniques. So we shine light in and we determine either how much light is coming out or how much um, got absorbed. That is directly proportional to the concentration of analyte in the sample often. And then we also have electrochemistry techniques which are proportional to the concentration of the analyte. Using things like the Nernst equation in a voltaic cell, we can determine that. There's also uh, current-based techniques like amperometry, cyclic voltammetry. There's a lot of different electrochemistry techniques that we can use that are proportional, generate a signal in proportion to the concentration of the analyte. And here's the equation that we use for that, which is identical to the total analysis technique equation, uh, except that in this case, it's proportional to the concentration. Now, unlike up here, where we can know from the molar mass or the stoichiometry, we can figure this out. Down here, we generally have to measure this experimentally. So, we will create a calibration curve and then determine what this value is. And from the calibration curve, this value would be the slope of the line. So it's fairly simple to determine, but that is a difference between these techniques. And often it's just best to create a calibration. Uh, Things like the path length of a particular cell or how bright the light bulb is or various other little variations in the spectrometer could affect the analysis and so therefore it's best just to calibrate each time.